Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the physiology of male erection and ejaculation. Um, so an erection is the enlargement and stiffening of the penis that is a vascular event controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Um, so both the nervous system and the cardiovascular system play important roles in the ability to have an erection and to ejaculate, um, which I'll talk about um, next. So it's a vascular event, meaning that high blood pressure um, and other cardiovascular problems could interfere with the ability to have or maintain an erection, uh, but it's also controlled by the autonomic nervous system. So somebody who's chronically stressed also might have trouble. So that's, uh, those are just two of aspects of the, the complicated issue of erectile dysfunction. Um, but that's why there's so many different factors or so many different things that could lead to erectile dysfunction. Um, when the penis is flaccid, it's because the arteries are vasoconstricted, which limits blood flow. Okay, so an erection essentially means that the penis has inflated, it is filled with blood, and in doing so, it causes the, the penis to stiffen. Um, so when the penis is flaccid, it means that the arteries are vasoconstricted. So it's limiting the amount of blood flow that is going into the penis. So it's enough, of course, to support the cells and, and keep the tissue healthy and alive. Um, but it's vasoconstricted so that it's not so much that it's causing an erection. Um, so for an erection to occur, um, the blood vessels has to the blood vessels have to vasodilate to allow the penis to fill fully with with blood. Um, so smooth muscle in those arteries relax, so it allows those vessels to vasodilate, um, and that happens in response to parasympathetic impulses. Um, and then also there are some local hormones and chemicals that are released that also participate in that process. So the arteries dilate, large amounts of blood are, are able to flow in and fill the penis. And it's a really great design because the more the penis fills with blood, the more it presses on, it puts pressure on uh, the veins that would drain the blood from the penis. So the more it fills with blood, the less blood is able to be drained away by the veins. So it makes, it, it's sort of a self-contained system that allows it, the erection to be sustained more easily. Uh, so you don't just have to keep pumping in tons of blood to keep the erection sustained. Um, so when the stimulus is removed, it's causing the erection, or if ejaculation occurs, then the process reverses and the arteries go back to their vasoconstricted state and the blood drains away and you're back to a um, kind of normal flaccid state. So the neural control of erection. So an erection happens via two different mechanisms. The first is psychogenic, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's thinking, it's based on thoughts and sensory stimuli like auditory stimuli, visual stimuli, other things um, that lead to <laughs> sexual thoughts. Um, that would cause a psychogenically uh, caused erection. Um, so it's elicited by peripheral pathways arising in the sacral parasympathetic or thoracolumbar sympathetic nuclei of the spinal cord. So more often parasympathetic, so parasympathetic nervous system generally causes an erection, um, but it can uh, partially also be the thoracolumbar sympathetic nuclei. Um, a reflexogenic uh, erection is exactly what it sounds like. It's an erection that's caused reflexively. Uh, it happens via stimulation of the genitals uh, that initiates a sacral spinal reflex via parasympathetic pathways. Okay, so there is there can be some sympathetic involvement in uh, the neural control of an erection, but it is primarily parasympathetic. Uh, and it makes sense because in a fight or flight situation, that's kind of an inappropriate time to have an erection. That's not an appropriate time to have intercourse or to try to procreate when you're trying to fight a bear or whatever the situation is that's causing the fight or flight response. Um, so it makes sense that um, erection would happen in more rest and, and digest type of state. Okay, ejaculation. Uh, is the powerful release of semen from the urethra to the exterior that happens in two phases. So emission is controlled predominantly by the sympathetic nervous system. And there can be a little bit of parasympathetic input, but it's primarily a sympathetic reflex. 
Okay, so uh, erection is primarily parasympathetic and ejaculation is primarily sympathetic. Um, so let's see. Um, when emission is happening, part of the reflex is that the involuntary sphincter at the base of the bladder closes because, of course, the urethra is shared by both the urinary tract and the reproductive tract. So we don't want urine to be coming down from the bladder and mixing with semen. Um, so that sphincter at the base of the bladder is closed tightly so that no urine is coming out during emission. Um, then we have peristaltic contractions, meaning the wave-like contractions of the muscles of a tube. Um, in this case, we're talking about all of the, the ducts and glands that make up the male reproductive system. Uh, they all experience peristaltic contractions so that they're secreting their fluids and they're being passed along through the, the system of ducts, um, to all ultimately coming into the urethra to come together and form semen. Um, so emission can be induced through physical or visual erotic stimulation. Um, emission can occur with no expulsion. So expulsion is the part that comes next once all of the contents of semen are in the urethra. Um, now for expulsion, the sphincter stays nice and tightly closed, but then the external urethral sphincter opens so that it allows the semen to be ejected through the urethra. Um, so the semen is propelled through the penile portion, again, via peristaltic contractions in the urethra. Um, we don't know exactly what causes that part, the expulsion part that's still being studied. Um, and emission can happen without expulsion. Okay, so emission, like nocturnal emission would be if there's emission during the nighttime. So there could be dreams or um, other uh, stimulations, things that in the nighttime that can cause emission, but not necessarily expulsion. So emission can occur without expulsion. Um, in some cases, it could be pathological. In other cases, it's not, and it's just totally normal and natural. Uh, so one can happen without the other. So um, to sum it up, erection is primarily parasympathetic, happens during rest and digest. And then um, as stimulation increases or continues, um, then it can trigger a sympathetic reflex that would cause emission and then followed by expulsion. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.